Welcome to the lecture on elements of mathematical modeling in Tundish steel making. So, uh, so far we talked about uh, uh, the prerequisites especially uh, we needed to know uh, the concept of fluid flow, heat transfer. Uh, then in the uh, last week we also talked about uh, the solution methodology of uh, the you know equations and the solution parameters, control parameters especially. Uh, especially uh, towards the uh, solving of the uh, equations. Now, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, the uh, aspects of modeling or uh, you know when we go for mathematical or numerical modeling of the uh, Tundish steel making. So, as we know that when we talk about the uh, models, then uh, we deal with either the physical model or the mathematical or numerical model. Now, in those cases, uh, in, in the case of physical model, you need to uh, prepare uh, a physical model which is normally uh, made of uh, you know uh, perspex sheet or so and then we do the uh, you know physical modeling by uh, allowing the water uh, normally the fluid to flow. Whereas, in mathematical modeling uh, you know uh, we have the set of uh, uh, equations which are representing the uh, case of the uh, phenomena which is uh, occurring inside the Tundis. And then these equations are needed to be solved and we also have studied that uh, how you know the, uh, uh, the equations are solved and uh, how you get the uh, results. Now, the uh, thing is that uh, uh, being the uh, era of computers, uh, we normally do the computation on uh, computers and also uh, for uh, uh, having a better understanding you know uh, visually we have nowadays tools where you can have the uh, geometric creation, you can see the geometry, then uh, you have to apply the conditions uh, you know. So, you have to take first of all uh, uh, these uh, you know conditions or you have to have the assumptions and you have to also take all the uh, conditions which will say that you are solving which type of problem. Then you are making the geometry and then putting the conditions uh, dif uh, different conditions at different places and uh, then you are solving the equations in that particular domain and then you are uh, getting the results and interpreting them. So, if you talk about the uh, you know elements of the uh, model mathematical or numerical model which you develop uh, towards the uh, you know flow in a Tundis uh, flow and heat transfer in a Tundis. So, uh, basically uh, uh, they are uh, done uh, under the you know uh, three heads. Uh, one is the uh, pre-processing, another is solving and uh, then you have post processing. So, mostly the CFD tools uh, when we use the CFD you know uh, do the CFD analysis. So, basically our work is divided into these three main uh, you know domains. Uh, so, pre processing, solving and post processing. Now, what we do in uh, pre processing the in the uh, pre processing uh, we do the geometric creation. So, uh, normally uh, what we do is uh, uh, we have to create a particular kind of geometry. So, that uh, geometry will be available to you. Uh, if suppose you are making the uh, model of the Tundis, so you have to make a Tundis uh, using a um, uh, using a tool which uh, so by which you can uh, create the geometry and uh, that we will discuss that how uh, you know you create the geometry. There are many approaches by which uh, you create the geometry. So, that geometry you know has to be uh, there with you. Uh, in normal case if you start uh, uh, the, the simple uh, you know analysis you can have a geometry uh, um, of a rectangular uh, shape of box. If it is of three dimensional or you can have a uh, two dimensional geometry also. So, uh, that geometry needs to be you know clear in your mind 
Uh, then uh, what you do is you specify the uh, material properties, uh, you know, material of the, um, you know, uh, tandis by which it is made or material which is going to flow inside the, uh, you know, tandis. So, you will have uh, the boundary uh, material, material of the walls or, uh, you know, the material of the, prop, the steel which is flowing inside. Then you are uh, going to impose the uh, boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions will be there those conditions which are specified on the uh, boundaries. So, boundaries are especially the walls or the inlet or the outlet. You may have blocks inside. So, and uh, the you will have uh, boundary conditions may be of different type. You may have the uh, boundary condition related to flow, it may be related to heat transfer, it may be related to pressure. So, there may be different uh, kind of boundary conditions which you need to uh, specify uh, in the domain uh, and then uh, you are going to have the uh, uh, solution control parameters. So, once you put these uh, boundary conditions, you specify different zones as uh, the walls or uh, you know the uh, symmetry or, or the you know periodic boundary conditions or so or you specify the uh, inlet and outlet and other all other things. Uh, then uh, after that you have to go for the solution control parameters you have to provide those parameters which will uh, be talking about the uh, uh, solution which will be uh, done. So, basically there you need to provide uh, you know the number of iterations you want to uh, go further. Then you have to uh, you know uh, uh, specify the time step size if you are going for the uh, you know uh, the transient type of analysis. So, you will go for the uh, you know time step size that will be provided. Uh, then you will also go for the uh, you know uh, parameters which uh, will be helping you in uh, uh, getting the uh, solution converged uh, uh, quickly and give you the meaningful kind of results. So, that will be the relaxation parameters. So, those uh, parameters will be you know under that solution control parameters. Now, uh, you have to go for the solving and uh, solving uh, most of the tools may have a separate solver. So, uh, that will ensure that the equations uh, which are there integrated because of the uh, type of problem you have taken and because of the conditions which you have given. So, ultimately uh, they will be resulting into the set of equations and uh, these equations uh, uh, typically if you are solving you will have Navier-Stokes equations, you have the equation for energy and they need to be solved. And uh, then uh, they need to be solved using the solver. So, you may have uh, the solving option also uh, and uh, uh, you will be solving these. Uh, so, that will run uh, and in case of uh, the uh, steady state uh, you know type of uh, uh, the um, problem you will uh, wait till the steady state is reached. And uh, then you have also uh, many a times problems like uh, the in case of transient you will see that the uh, how you know with step size that iteration go away go forward. And then when the uh, you are uh, at a stage where the uh, solution is uh, solving uh, process is over then uh, you go for the uh, post processing operation. So, in the case of uh, post processing operation. Uh, you are going to have the uh, analysis of uh, the results. So, you, you have uh, you have the visual display of the uh, results, you want to have the uh, you know velocity or the pressure or the uh, or, or computation of any parameter you know uh, that uh, we try to uh, find uh, and, and that is known as post processing. So, post, post processing means after the uh, solution uh, is over, after the solver has done its job, then you try to uh, further uh, see the results. Uh, and uh, since uh, uh, we have uh, very effective tools nowadays, uh, 
uh, we can have the images, we can have the uh, graphs being plotted uh, for uh, one variable and against another variable or so. So, you can have those uh, different kind of graphs uh, being plotted and then you can interpret the results. So, that is also you know uh, a, a very good part, very important part because whatever you get the results, uh, they need to be interpreted uh, in a, a proper manner so that you get the meaningful results. So, that is why post processing also uh, is, is important and uh, uh, there are tools available which will properly uh, you know show uh, quickly it can show you the graphs of uh, or, or relationship between the different you know operating parameters and uh, uh, then accordingly you can have these interpretation of uh, the uh, results. So, uh, now uh, we will go towards the uh, geometry creation which is the initial uh, step uh, you know the first step uh, because now uh, first of all you need to have a proper geometry of the uh, you know uh, the tundis or any vessel which you are making. So, uh, you have to decide you are going for the two dimensional geometry or three dimensional geometry and uh, uh, in that case uh, you will have uh, you know in the case of uh, um, you know depending upon um, the type of geometry you will have to choose because uh, if you go for two dimensional geometry which will be uh, enough for uh, the complete representation of the uh, flow behavior or the behavior of uh, the system. In that case you prefer to go for two dimensional uh, geometries because that will take uh, less amount of computational time. Else you have to go for the uh, three dimensional geometries and uh, then uh, you know the uh, geometry needs to be uh, uh, you know uh, divided into small elements and as we have uh, studied that uh, you need to uh, apply the uh, these conservation equations. Uh, so, you will have the uh, suitable equations, you will have the uh, algebraic expressions basically you get out of uh, you know out of these uh, uh, conservation equations. Uh, when you um, apply the uh, different uh, kind of differencing schemes or discretization schemes. So, uh, basically you are uh, um, you know uh, 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 converting the whole domain into small elements uh, and then uh, you are. Uh, um, so, basically you will uh, have divide the domain into different control volumes and uh, then uh, you are going to start the work. Now, as far as the uh, grids are concerned, if you uh, you have to know that what kind of uh, analysis you are going to have on the um, you know on that particular geometry. So, whether depending upon the geometry, you have to see that whether you are going for the structure type of uh, uh, grids or uh, you have to go with the unstructured type of mess. Now, uh, structure type of mesh uh, are uh, there where uh, normally uh, you know you can uh, identify the adjacent cell with the help of the i, j and k values. If you are going for the uh, three dimensional analysis, in that case if you have to locate a particular cell that can that can have a unique i, j and k value. So, that is uh, normally the, um, the structured uh, kind of uh, uh, grid. And uh, if you have the grid uh, you know where it is not possible to have uh, that kind of uh, you know uh, grid structure. So, that they are known as the unstructured grid. So, in that case uh, certainly uh, it uh, uses its own internal data structures, its own uh, internal programs uh, and, and with the help of that uh, uh, it will be um, taking you know you can uh, go for a particular point or on a or a plane can be located, a surface can be located or a volume can be located and accordingly the um, analysis can be done. So, uh, you can have these uh, you know uh, structured or unstructured grid. Then uh, you have the uh, element uh, types. So, the element type uh, you know you may have you may go for 2D uh, structure or you may go for 3D structure. 
So, based on that uh, you know uh, if you have the 2D type of um, uh, grid, uh, so you have you may have the element type uh, may be like uh, you have triangular or you may have the quadrilateral type of uh, element. Whereas, if you go for the 3 dimensional rival structures you have uh, different kind of uh, you know uh, uh, grid topology. So, that may vary from the tetrahedron to hexahedron uh, to you know may be prismatic type. Uh, so, you have different uh, uh, kind of or always shaped. So, do we have may have different uh, types of elements which you may choose when you are uh, uh, making the uh, grids. Then uh, you know uh, approach of uh, making the geometry. Now, here uh, you must know that you can make the geometry uh, in a top down or bottom up approach. So, this is normally available with uh, uh, the commercial solvers. Uh, so, uh, you have uh, many kind of uh, commercial uh, you know uh, CFD tools like uh, Phoenix uh, Fluent is there, Star CD is there or, or there are many you know CFX and uh, you know all these. Uh, so, these are um, uh, using uh, their in their own way they are making the uh, geometries and uh, you know um, uh, you have solid modeling tools also like uh, uh, you can use the solid modeling tools solid works CATIA and all that. So, you can use the these uh, tools uh, to make the geometry. Now, making the geometry is uh, using the top down or the bottom up approach. So, bottom up approach means uh, you are starting from the initial and then making uh, the things and uh, moving towards the uh, the final result by adding uh, by in, in the uh, uh, adding uh, step wise addition of step wise like uh, you are first of all uh, uh, making the uh, points then you are making uh, joining the points uh, that is by lines then you are making the faces, uh, then you are making uh, using the faces you make the volumes and uh, then you integrate them and uh, uh, then uh, in that uh, you may specify certain kind of uh, you know zones like uh, you may have uh, uh, the uh, uh, blocked zone where you want you want uh, that it should be blocked or so or you can specify there itself uh, other zones. So, that we will see like uh, different zones like uh, wall inlet or so. So, uh, that is top uh, bottom up approach. Uh, in many cases uh, we go for the uh, top down approach also like uh, you know many a times it becomes helpful if you have to make suppose uh, one uh, uh, geometry uh, suppose uh, uh, you have to make a uh, geometry where the uh, things are suppose uh, this way that is uh, uh, you know uh, tapered. So, in that case you can make one geometry of uh, this type and then maybe that you can uh, uh, take this part being off. So, that is uh, uh, removing this part uh, taking away. So, that will lead to this result. So, you can start with a rectangular type of or, or a um, you know uh, three dimensional uh, structure and then cut a certain portion and make uh, the required geometry. So, that is bottom up I mean uh, top down approach. So, you make uh, uh, the uh, larger uh, you know uh, geometry and then you are uh, you know uh, uh, reducing that uh, uh, and, and getting the uh, required geometry. So, that is uh, using the uh, top down approach. So, both the approaches uh, basically are uh, you know in practice uh, and, and, and used uh, by the uh, modeling tools uh, to make a uh, proper uh, geometry. Uh, then comes uh, the uh, meshing parameters. So, once you make the geometry you will be making the geometry you will be uh, integrating them you will be making a complete uh, you know geometry of uh, which will be physically representing the uh, domain. Uh, then uh, you have to go for the meshing of uh, these uh, you know uh, geometry. Now, why meshing is important that we know that uh, by meshing uh, we are going to have 
the formation of the small control volumes or elements uh, which will be linked to each other. Uh, so, that when we apply uh, these uh, conservation equations and solved uh, you know when the equations are solved simultaneously in that case you are going to have the values of the uh, you know par parameters or variables uh, in the uh, respective cells uh, or, or at the respective nodes. So, uh, the meshing needs to be uh, done properly. Now, in while meshing, uh, you need to have the uh, uh, you know proper uh, uh, you know care for the mesh size. So uh, you can have uh, the uh, large uh, you know uh, number of meshes. Uh, so mesh size will be small. You can have a small number of mesh. Uh, so mesh size will be larger. Now, every you know as it is quite evident that when you take a large number of mess in that case the computational time will be higher and when you take less number of mess the computational time will be lower. But then certainly the, the accuracy will be affected. So, accordingly you have to take the mess size you have also to be careful while taking the mess size. Uh, what should we, what by what way uh, the uh, even the mesh size should vary. So, in, in case of the uh, boundary layer uh, regions, you may have to have the uh, you know uh, proper variation in the size of the uh, meshes uh, from the walls uh, uh, to the point in the active domain. So, uh, that uh, to basically uh, properly you know uh, predict the uh, output parameters you need to have a uh, an understanding of that also that how you have to uh, maintain those uh, you know mesh size. Then uh, the density that is what uh, it talks about and also the aspect ratio. So, typically uh, you know aspect ratio will uh, talk about uh, the you know uh, ratio of uh, the dimension of the uh, you know uh, mass in the uh, perpendicular directions. So, basically we try to have aspect ratio of 1 normally uh, which is more ideal, uh, but it is not always possible. So, we try not to have a very large value of aspect ratio uh, in, in most of the cases. So, these are the you know uh, points which uh, uh, needs to be looked into while going for the uh, meshing. So, once you do the meshing then it will uh, show and you can have a uh, look of the mesh uh, that how the meshing has been uh, done. So, you have to go for the uh, checking of also the meshes and uh, uh, you can uh, the, the softwares have the capability to ensure that there is proper mesh. Otherwise, they may so tell that uh, there is no proper meshing, there is no proper integration. Maybe once we, um, the situation may be such that you have done the meshing, but the the portions are not integrated. So there will be two different zones, and there may not be, you know, transfer of information from uh, one uh, region to other. So all these things need to be checked into while when we do the final meshing. At that time, you need to check all these things so that you can go further and uh, when you go for uh, specifying the other parameters uh, uh, in the um, uh, domain. So, that time you have not to face uh, much of the problem. So, uh, after the uh, uh, meshing or and after the uh, geometry creation, uh, we need to be uh, looking at the specifying zones as well as the boundary conditions. So, you know what we do is that as you know in typical you know attendees you have different you know parts like this is a attendees. So, if you, you will have inlet and then you may have the outlet. So, typically you have these you know these are the uh, you know walls uh, and uh, then uh, this is suppose inlet and this is the outlet 
So, uh, that is uh, there and then you have these are walls may be that uh, many a times we may use a certain kind of dams or wares uh, that are they are the uh, flow modifiers. So, what is done uh, uh, some of the uh, tools uh, you know uh, while making geometry itself you can uh, uh, show them as uh, you, know, you, you, you show them as uh, the walls or the uh, blockages and some of them while uh, providing the solution control parameters or while giving the boundary conditions there you have uh, those uh, uh, you know options where to define that this is wall or so and then accordingly you have to provide the proper uh, boundary conditions. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, this, so what you have to do is first of all you have to define the uh, zone where you define the boundary type and you also define the continuum that is uh, so in boundary type uh, uh, normally you have the, uh, the boundaries uh, you know specified in terms of walls because external boundary is normally the wall. So, you will have to define those surfaces as the wall. Similarly, you will have the uh, conditions like uh, the inflow. So, you will have inlet. So, that will be the uh, inflow boundary condition will be there. Then you have outflow boundary condition. Uh, that will be outlet. So, basically while making geometry also you can specify those uh, zones as uh, the walls or the inlet or inflow as or outflow flow or symmetry. So, it will go there and while you are giving the uh, proper boundary conditions at that time you can have the uh, uh, selection from the you know uh, drop menu that if you take wall whatever you have specified as walls they will come and properly selecting them you can have the proper values uh, fixed to them. So, accordingly uh, you know uh, this way you uh, provide these uh, you know uh, you specify these uh, uh, zones as the uh, uh, boundary types and then uh, you are uh, going for the continuum or the uh, you know. So, in continuum uh, you know means that uh, you are going to define the domain wherever uh, you have the fluid. So, you will say that it is uh, occupy going to be occupied by the fluid. Similarly, wherever you have the, uh, the existence of porous materials in case of porous uh, you know uh, flow. So, you have to define that uh, this uh, region needs to be specified as the uh, porous material. And uh, similarly, if there are blocks or solid uh, portions, so you need to define them. So, as I told that uh, you can define uh, these things either while making geometries or you can uh, and there itself or while uh, you are specifying the boundary conditions, uh, you can uh, uh, do that job uh, you know while uh, going for the specifying the zones and the uh, boundary conditions. So, once you have uh, uh, given those uh, specified these uh, zones uh, as boundary types and also uh, the continuum that is uh, where there is fluid, where there is solid or so or porous media, then you have to provide the solution control parameters. Now, solution control parameters means now after that you are going to have the solution started. Now, what you need for uh, need to specify uh, when you have to um, you, you, you want to talk about uh, the solution to be started. So, basically you have to tell that whether your solution is steady or transient. So, if it is steady it is fine you have to uh, tell that for how many iterations you are going to stop uh, after how many iterations you are going to stop and um, see the result. Uh, whereas, uh, in the case of uh, transient analysis, uh, you will have uh, uh, the specification of the time step sizes. So, for in a particular time uh, uh, depending upon the step size, you will go it will go for that many you know number of iterations and you are going also to provide certain relaxation parameters. 
So, uh, that uh, parameters need to be specified uh, you know towards getting a converged solution. So, these uh, you know uh, relaxation parameters will be provided uh, and uh, then the solution will start and it will uh, reach till the uh, till you get the uh, results. So, once the solution is over in that case after that you go and do the uh, um, you know post processing of results you um, uh, interpret the results in your own way. So, this basically are these are the elements of a typical uh, you know uh, model mathematical model or numerical model which you are making uh, especially with the help of uh, you know uh, you will be you will be uh, you must be having the uh, exposure to certain uh, of the uh, tools modeling tools. So, you can you have to you know proceed uh, and you have to have the information about uh, these things uh, so that you can get the uh, meaningful results uh, after the post processing I mean after the processing operation that is in case of post processing. So, we will talk uh, uh, somewhat more about the boundary conditions and all that uh, how it is uh, what are the different kinds of boundary conditions which are you know important and all that in our uh, coming lecture. Thank you very much.